Welcome to Face to Face, a podcast which pairs creatives with the legends who've inspired them. In this first episode, musician Ray meets Sugar Babes Mutia Buena. Born in London and growing up in Croydon, it was between the ages of 14 and 16 that Ray attended Brit School. Following in the footsteps of Adele, Amy Winehouse and Daphne Twiggs, Ray released her debut EP in 2014 and has since worked with the likes of Stormzy, Charlie XCX and Beyonce. It was last summer that Ray publicly criticised her record label on social media, claiming that she'd been signed for a four-album deal in 2014, but that she hadn't yet been allowed to release an album. In July this year, Ray released Hard Out Here, her first song as an independent artist. Mutia Bueno was born and raised in Kingsbury, northwest London. The Sugar Babes formed in 1998 and released their debut album One Touch in 2000. Despite the album including three top 20 singles, they were dropped by their record label. They released a second album, Angels with Dirty Faces, in 2002. It featured number one hits, Ran Round and Freak Like Me. After the release of Sugar Babe's fourth album, Taller in More Ways, in 2005, Mutia announced her departure from the group. It was in 2007 that she released her solo album, Real Girl. In 2012, Mutia and the original Sugar Babe's members, Keisha Buchanan and Siobhan Donaghy, confirmed that they had regrouped. This summer they shut down Glastonbury, and they'll be back on the road this autumn. During their face-to-face -face conversation, Ray and Mutia discussed mental health, social media, and navigating the toxic side of the music industry. This episode was recorded at the Standard Hotel in London. Well, I saw those Glastonbury clips. That was just ridiculous. That's so good. I Babe, can't even lie. How was that flipping feeling? Uh, to be honest, with the whole Glastonbury thing, I actually kept questioning people going, is there even people outside like watching? To me, it's, it's, I always get nervous, but it's, an, it's a great feeling. But because um, Glastonbury is so different from a lot of the other festivals. It's like the you know. festival. Exactly. Mm. I feel like I'm still on that buzzing. I'm still buzzing from here. Well, I think we all are, to be honest, but it just helps kind of just kind of getting ourselves ready and prepared yes. for what's next. Yes. What is the next? Touring. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we haven't toured for about nine, ten years. So we're all very excited. Yeah. I just can't wait to get back on the road and be mm. able to kind of feel free to just be an artist again, mm. you know? And yeah. what about yourself? How's everything going? Independent? Yes, awesome. independent life. It's it's so, do you know what? Like, I'm really excited for this conversation because I've, I've there's, there's the word that I call, it's resilience, right? right. And right. you have to have so much of it in this yeah. industry. Mm -hmm. And it's like, I remember, yeah, how old was I? I don't even oh, remember God. how. No, I don't even remember how old I was yet, but I bought in, I think it was Woolworths. Oh, God, yeah. I bought um three. Yes. Oh, God. Sugar Babes, three. Wow. And I used to go home from school, come home from school, and I'd shut myself in the living room. I'd have about like three or four albums, and I'd put them on CDs, That's and crazy. I would just dance oh. around the living room. Thank and you. Sing the lyrics so loud. Is it caught in a moment? Caught in a moment, yeah. Caught in a moment. Yeah, and I'll just be there like <laughs> making these little routines, Thank all of this you. stuff. And I'm thinking like, I was so young, like I must have been like, what, eight? How old are you now? I'm 24 now. 24, yeah. So it's like- God, I remember them days. <laughs> but babe, how, how do you even think that we have so much fuel and resilience and where does it come from for you to still today be like, this is my passion. I'm seeing this through. Like yeah. I, I love this. This is what I'm doing. And all the knockbacks and all the oh, God. BS in between. Like yeah. how have you? How do you do it, babe? Um, to be honest, I don't know how I've done it for so many years. I mean, the knockbacks and and having to still have the will to want it to get up and still sing. Don't yes. get it twisted. Depression was a massive thing for me. Mm. I had to after, especially having my daughter, mm. I had to kind of pick myself back up again. Mm. And I, for for many years, I was very I was in this hole. But because of my passion for music, and I've been singing since I was nine, mm. so it kind of still made me want to just carry on, but also just be mindful for where and what I'm doing. And I should have been just been able to be like, you know what, let me just get out there and do what the hell I want. Yeah. But unfortunately, yeah. you know yeah. how this industry works, um, whether it's the industry people, whether it's people in general, you know, the public, 
there's always something that will always push you backwards. Mm. And but to be honest, you know what it is. I've just got. I've just grown to the point of not wanting to care about what anyone thinks mm. anymore. Like who cares? Right. Do you know what I mean? Like I've never had the best press. <laughs> girl, girl, <laughs> girl. All press is good press. All press is good press. <laughs> But I can't lie. Per- when it's in a person, when it's a personal attack, right, it's always harder. But thank God and thank to the Lord, I've never had such a bad reaction to when it comes to my music or mm. when it comes to you know singing or the anything. art. The art, yes, of it. it's always been personal. But how is what's it for you now? Like being independent. Well, do you know what? I think it's a really. It's just something I'm, I've never understood. Like, I understand it mm-hmm. so much, but at the same time, I don't understand it at all, where where I feel like it's specifically women. Mm-hmm. You're, you're not allowed to be in control of your career, your artistry, and if you mm-hmm. ever do want to take the reins, then you're being difficult, you're being counterproductive. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, you get all this negativity, and it's so much, like, it's so much to carry because it's like you either compromise right. and then you're lacking something in your art and in, in what you believe is the right thing. Right, you know and then someone I mean? else is telling you it's not. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I feel like I all we that. have in this industry really is our gut instinct. Mm-hmm. That's all we have. I agree. You know, so when you're like, my gut is telling me this isn't what it is. What I should be doing. This mm-hmm. isn't what gives me joy. This isn't what I want to show the world. But right. then you've got a whole infrastructure that's opposing that mm-hmm. and will be disappointed in you or angry at you if, if you, you don't. don't. It's the the most... Are we allowed to swear? No. Yeah, you can swear. Oh, great. Good to know. Good, thank was... you. It's the most <laughs> mind fucking fuckery. I get that. <laughs> you, no, I get that. You know? Totally get that. So you, it's just like, you know, I'm obviously in the place now where... You do feel more creative, being able to do what the fuck you want. Babe, like, as in, it is the biggest blessing. Good, because I'm. I feel like I'm just starting. I'm just starting my journey now. Right. Like, good. I'm not filtering anything I have to say. Like, w- one of the biggest things for me as an artist, which has been a problem, is that like, I'm a songwriter, right? And I I love so many different genres and flavors mm-hmm. and styles of music. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you know grew up in the church, gospel, nice. then soul, and then I love jazz. Like, I'm the biggest jazz really? head. I play jazz music every day of you my see? life. Okay, fine. Do you know what I mean? It makes sense. Obviously, love dance music, but I learned to love dance music. That right. wasn't something I initially was like... Into at first. Yes. I get that. I just I understood, that. studied the craft, and then I understood how to like write pop songs. Then I've been into like, I just love live music. I just love music. Music in general. So Full what stop. was the age you started when it came to like you first singing? So I was writing my first songs when I was like, seven, eight. Stop it. Yeah, I learned keys really young. I I, I even, we had a little duvet and a little microphone and I was recording songs. like a booth. Yeah, yeah, a little like (laughs) makeshift booth. We was recording songs from young. Do you know what I'm saying? I love that. I caught the bug. There's only been one plan. It was just that I have to find a way to make this a career, you know? And I feel like, obviously when you don't have like, the doors open or anyone in right. you don't have a plug do you know what I mean you really have to you know you, you gotta go find it you gotta go and hustle hard mm-hmm. work hard open them doors for yourself you know and yo it's it's, it's been, been a journey it's been a journey and you're still going and I just great. feel like it's it's so exciting but it's also like wow like yeah. you have to have some serious steam which mm-hmm. is why I have so much admiration and respect Thank you. for you and you know again it's been hard babe <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's been so hard. I mean, like, even for the comeback of Sugar Waves coming back mm. now, it's it's because it's been so many years, you just don't know. I mean, you always know there's support. Mm. I think I think we've all gathered that we have our own support system, mm. you know, and, and we've got great supporters. Mm. But to actually have a foundation where, you know, you can go out and do touring yeah. or shows and yeah. be booked. yeah. It's hard because you yeah. just don't know whether people are yeah. still into it. Yes. It's a it's a gamble. It is. But I do f- you know you find as well, like you'll have a hundred positive comments. Mm-hmm. And like, we love you, we're so happy. And there's you're, the one you're, and, you're there's this, one and then there's one person like blah 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 blah. <laughs> and it just goes around your head it like does. a flipping it's broken tor- record. It's, yeah, it's it, it becomes tortured because I can't even like like I always get 
well, more than one, but the odd fucker that's always mm. trying to say something or try and mm. put me down in what way, in whatever way, whether it's my vocals or whether it's my looks. Mm. And it is, that's the problem for me. The problem is, is that I have, a, you know, I literally just memorize everything that's been said negative, negative. than anything that's said positive. Facts. And it's only now that I'm slowly getting into the point where I'm like, you know what? I need to stop listening to what they say because I'm not trying to be rude. Half these people that are, are making these comments, I just look at them and think, what, 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 what are you is, doing with your yeah, life? Facts. You know, and I'm only here, I've been here because I love to sing and mm. I love entertaining people. Mm. Otherwise I just wouldn't bother. Right. I just want, right. it's not that I wouldn't want to every day keep going into the same bullshit of someone being horrible. No. Especially when you're not doing nothing wrong. Facts. Do you know what I mean? And that's the I damn shame of it. You don't know me. I know. <laughs> and that's the hardest thing as well. I think obviously with this new like social media generation and all of that, you know, like there's such a pressure on like oh musicians God. now. It's mm-hmm. like, you need to show your personality, show people who you are, like da da da. Mm-hmm. I kind of wish I could just sit down one on one with mm-hmm. any fan who wants to like hang out and be like, get to know me that way. Yeah. And like, we're there. Do you know no, what I mean? Of course. Do you, are you feeling the pressure on like the social stuff? Because I, I live in um, I, I, to be honest, the algorithms. I'm girl. slightly hoping one day there's one, there's like a whole cut off for like 24 hours <laughs> and everyone loses bad data about everyone. <laughs> That's what I wish. Because be I do think to myself, you know what, like, I could go out and do a show and be mm-hmm. happy with my night. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to either see something the next day that of myself that I've not liked. Yeah. If I go, oh my God, I look a bit frumpy. Or, yeah. oh my God, I was hitting a bad note. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Or someone else is going to point something out about right. me. So it's either one or the other. Like, I, I, we do it to ourselves. We do. But it, that's just how it goes. Like, mm-hmm. the industry right now, I mean, to me, like, it's changed from so much from when we first came out yeah, to now. Yeah, how has it been for you I mean, to, like, see the change? Like, well, from cassette this? tapes to bloody CDs. Girl. and <laughs> We don't have that no Girl. more. So it's even funny when I talk to my daughter. My daughter's 17. So even when I talk to her and I'm like, oh, God, CD you players. 17. I you do. look in flip incredible really and oh God. stunning I feel like a drag no babe it. you look really? so fit like Thank stop you. it now any of them negative please just uh, <laughs> get it out it's please. hard it's so you know this already I know it's hard to but I just you know I've been learning so much more about the industry mm. through my daughter because I'm very stuck on to like 90s R&B mm-hmm. uh, the good old soul music yes girl you know yes. romance but not being romantic yes, with it yes. I'm that bitch yes. but it's like <laughs> With her, like she teaches me what's new and what's out. Mm. And I just sit there and I think, my God, like it's either, even like with um, tracks, music gets shorter and shorter. Yeah. I've been hearing music, songs that are like one minute something. Babe. I'm not used to that. Babe. It used to be, this is what's crazy, it used to be like, long vinyls <laughs> that you would just flip and you would only have one yeah. like my dad's era like then you've got flipping CDs mm-hmm. now then it was iTunes single right. and it was like about the song mm-hmm. and now it's about 15 seconds so of a song terrible. performing well yeah. on the app and that's what people are judging your music from these from days from tiny little right. people's attention spans have gotten less and less and less and like how do you feel like as artists and as creatives like we can focus on the art when it's just when it's like you have I'm trying to work out how the best way to phrase this is like how do you cope with yeah creating art and then only yeah having to find a little moment of it to to try and push or Think of a trend that you should share or yeah, like I don't pressure. Even, it's hard because where do you start? Because in my head, a whole song for me is something that I'm proud of. Mm. So from start from the beginning to the ending, mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, I love the whole song. Mm-hmm. But it's true. Where do you start for everyone to go and jump on it? Right. And then and then now you've got TikTok, which I love. I love a TikTok. I love TikTok. I, I love like, a TikTok. It's such a love-hate. All musicians <laughs> have a, such a love-hate. As a consumer, I'm like, yeah, this is brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As an artist, I'm like, oh, um, no. Like, this is stress. And I think because of TikTok as well, because it's quite a young crowd, mm. most of the time, everyone's a lot more open-minded about yeah. things. I find that when you go on Instagram and all that, it's a bit more like everyone's a bit more kind of just strict and right. ev- you know everyone's watching more what you're doing right, with right, TikTok right. it's like you look and you just kind of keep it scrolling it is way more free it's a lot more free yeah. and I feel like that's the best thing about right now is that 
you have more of a say. Yeah. Like if something's wrong, do you know what I mean? That's how oh, like facts. if something's you can wrong, get a message yeah, out there, out there straight yes. away. Because yes. normally like you have something in the newspaper and they put it out and they're chatting shit, and you don't have a voice to counteract that. I can't imagine worst. that. The worst. So but, wait, so so you was fourteen, right? Yeah. When 14. Sugar Babes formed? No, I was 11. Stop. Yeah, I was 11. So I I, I literally just turned You 11. was 11? 11. How did she even... How did that even happen? Um, okay, so Siobhan was uh, signed as a soloist to our previous manager. Uh-huh. Um, then I met him randomly through my dad. Uh-huh. And then... I've known Keisha yeah. since we were like nine, eight, nine. Aww. So we used to sing in primary school together. We Stop. used to sing like Red Light Special against the wall. Stop. <laughs> yeah. And it, now when we were talking about it the other day, we were like, why was we singing Red Light Special <laughs> and and what and feeling ourselves against the wall at the age of six, like uh, in six in year six? Yeah, that random. R&B music tainted us. That's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, all them sexy videos. We're right. just like, we need to be that. Yo. That was all it was. <laughs> and then so we started doing that, and then obviously I started doing the solo thing, and then mm. me and Siobhan got brought together as a duet. Mm. And then and I how was, old was you at that point? I was about 11, well, I was 11, 12, wow. 11, 12. And then I was like, no, I'll be about 11. Mm. And then me and Keisha went to the same high school as well. So I was like, oh, I've got friends. Fully well known, I knew she could sing. Come and I was kind of hoping it was going to go the way that it went. So wow. it did, because he went, oh, can you sing? And she was like, yeah. Wow. And then he got her to sing and he was like, oh, my sugar babies. And then we were like, huh? Ooh. It kind of sounds it's quite weird. Isn't it? You know, you know, you know like okay, I, when you reflect on something, you're like, wait, actually, wait a minute, we were 11, like 11, 12, 13. That is wild. And you're like, oh, sugar babe. So I was like, oh, God. And then we actually started thinking, when we get to the age that we are now, mm. how would people look at you and be like, sugar babes? Like, would you be called sugar babes still? And it actually makes more sense now than it did back mm. then, because I feel like back then we was a lot younger. <laughs> girl, that's kind of crazy, girl. You know, you're just allowed to say that's these That's kind of wild. Very wild. Yeah. But from there, we just kind of just, yeah, we just grew and got our first um, label sign in. Wow. And then we got dropped, and then we got picked up again, and... You know, it was just, I feel like- How did you deal with those highs and lows? You know what, I can't even lie. I was, cause at, during that time I was a lot younger. Mm. So I feel like I was that 16, 17, 18 year old that was like, I don't give a fuck about nobody. I don't care about anyone. Good I just want to go out and party and live life. And that's where I think it started all for me when all the paparazzi and everyone was like picking up on me going out and being the rebel that they called me, wherever. Mm. Um, but I just felt like, do you know what? Like, even till now, it's weird. It's a weird feeling because mm. I don't look at myself or we all don't look at ourselves as, you know, I feel like sometimes I don't feel like myself until I see it. And it's like when people send me videos of myself and then I'm like, oh my God, is that me? Is that me? Oh. Or if, if we're recording in the studios, we're mm. like, oh my God, is this us? Oh God. Oh. But, it's, but it's nice because it's always refreshing. Yeah. And we don't feel like we've, we've finished and we've even got to where we want to be in our peak of our career. So we've mm-hmm. got a lot that we want to do, mm-hmm. like individually and as a group. And to prove everyone wrong. Basically. As well. Basically. Like that's also my fuel. Like it's yeah. just like... And that's what you're doing right now, right? And that is, Do you feel that way? Well, yeah, I'm definitely... I'm definitely, yeah, on that path. Like, Good. I know there is so much opinions against my progress and... Right, you but. know, I just have to. I, there's a lot of things I'm unlearning as well, like of course. the statistics narrative and mm-hmm. like all of these things. Because I, I genuinely believe artists who put out bodies of work and grow slow and steady and grow a solid right. fan base Boys. based on the art. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's where my heart lies. Like, and if it goes big, then great. But that doesn't. I don't want to chase those things anymore no. because I just don't think that's what real art is. That like, I feel like real art is like something different, something that's breaking the narrative, something that's being honest or something that's not trying to right. be a hit, you know? I get that. Do you know what I mean? And it, I, I, I totally hear that. So do you, like, have you been working on like new material? Have you got an album coming out or? Yeah, I've got, I've just handed it in. Amazing. Ah. Which is so exciting. Good. It's my first one Good. ever. And, um, and you're happy with it. I'm so proud of it. Good. And I'm so proud of you. It breaks all, yeah. thank you. Of it breaks course. all the rules. Good. I never would have been allowed to release a record like this 
under an infrastructure and I understand that, you know. And yeah, it's really a a journey of forgetting the things that don't matter and focusing Uh on the things that do matter. You know, the artists that I love, I remember I was in my room about a year ago today, to be honest, and I have like a quote on my wall and it's like Nina Simone. And underneath it says, it's artist's duties to reflect the times. Right. And I read it one morning and I just burst out crying. And I was like, what am I doing? You know, seven years. A realization. Doing the dance to make other people happy. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, I'm someone who I really care about things. I have very strong opinions about things. I'm very passionate. Like I see something wrong in even behind the scenes as an industry was even something I was going to ask you next about like, you know, the men behind the scenes and the right. gatekeepers and the people who abuse their power and the people who oh put God, me yeah. through the ringer. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And like, I, I wanted to women talk to you about that, actually, right. as well. Because it's just the reality mm-hmm. of the industry. Even though, like you said, we're growing into times now where you have like apps like TikTok and, and Me Too movement and things like where right. there's less places to hide in the darkness. Mm-hmm. You was making music in a time where there wasn't that. And things were allowed to happen (laughs) behind the scenes. Oh my God, yeah. And men were allowed to just take the piss. Men, and and you know what? Saying that, a lot of women as well. Really? You know, the the thing about it is the reason why we lasted so long is because we was able to still try and pull together. But unfortunately, growing up, we had loads of people that wanted to try and divide us all. Mm. Especially the men. Mm. Um, So there was a lot of people around, especially the adults, were trying to divide us she's a better thing or she's a better this and she's and in the end it kind of always used to make us all look at each other and be like are we meant to hate each other mm-hmm. or is this or is this because people are just trying to batter us down and it's be like trying comparison to, narrative it's disgusting I think it's splitting people up to make you feel not wanted or f- make you feel like shit and insecure and, and inse- paranoid insecurity is like I guess like from when I was younger mm. until until now, my insecurities is 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 people look at me and be like, oh, she's very secure of herself, you know. Mm. And I'm very shy. Mm. I'm not I'm not secure of myself mm. because I feel like the barren that we've and the abuse that we've had to go through mm. in the years of, you know, who likes who or who's saying this about you in a mm. newspaper and people talking about you like you don't mean anything. You know, I mean this is the reason why I find that there's a lot of artists out there that have committed suicide. Yeah. <clears throat> I find it very, you have to be very strong headed right. in this industry. Like right. you're not. And the worst thing about it is everyone wants to take the mickey first until something's done. A hundred percent. And then when it's done. I mean, done, look, at, look at Caroline Flack. There you go. Prime God bless example. her soul. The loveliest, sweetest woman you right. ever meet. And everyone wants to say whatever they want to say mm-hmm. until whatever's happened. And now all of a sudden you're all sorry and you're all it's angry at the press. Enough. No, you was all part of it. Like yeah. what's, do you know what I mean? And this is what I hate about the social media in that way. Is mm-hmm. that, you know, as quick as it is to go out and say... Cancel culture, your, bullying, the flipping, crazy. like you do one thing that's like done, done, right. done, done, done. And then there's little small-minded people that will go out and be like, oh, well, it must be true. And then no, you're like, babe. and you're still fighting that 1% because the rest of the 100% are like, no, babe. we love her and she's cool. But then the 1%, you're like, you're trying to defend yourself from that. Babe. It's crazy. It is nuts. I had like a tiny little taste of cancel culture for like 10 <laughs> seconds. Yeah, I remember like my sister had, had my sister's a songwriter as well. Right. And she wrote a song for an artist and they didn't credit her yet or something like that. They hadn't credited her. Right. It just said the artist's name on it. And I, I, obviously I'm a very protective sister. Like I didn't even think about the logistics of the fact that they probably hadn't uploaded it yet. It just come out. Whatever. Right. I'm like she very protective. <laughs> I'm Scorpio. I'm like what? So I yeah. went on to it and I was like, "You need to credit my sister. Give her songwriting credit." And all of a sudden, I just refreshed my and It was like, boom, boom, boom. Really? Who are you? You suck. You're disgusting. You this like all because like, of that. Because of that girl. Because you know, like just sta- because of stands. that. If you come for stands, yeah. you know, it's it's a different thing coming. And I literally sat there in my chair like. <sighs> Oh no, I will never, I will never. Forget that. No, and I it, that would affect you. It was, that was real, that And the worst scary. thing about it, it wasn't even about you. No, <laughs> I was just trying to protect my little sister. I mean, I just give her a credit. Because I do feel passionately about the way songwriters are treating this well, industry look, I mean, too, you know. Look what's been going on with you. Like, mm. if your your sister's a songwriter and you've been fighting for, for your rights for the mm. last how many years? Mm. Do you know what I mean? You You're only going to jump on it. just on triggers... It. That I would have done the pain same thing. and that overlooked that overlooked thing, you know, where you'll be, 
you know, I, I have these moments. I'm in, I'm in the studio. I'm yeah. like giving my all, you know, like contributed to a song. Like I know what my first split is. You know, at the very least, you split things four ways, right? Four people yeah, in the room, split of it four course. ways. But all of a sudden, because I'm the girl, <laughs> the, the unestablished girl, you've got producers who had nothing to do with the record, babe, mm -hmm. who added a snare drum, Who's coming for 10% of my publishing, but mm -hmm. no one else's, and I have to I concede. Totally and then another one coming for 10, and then you get, I'm left with five, and I'm livid because I flipping wrote the chorus. Are you taking the piss? <laughs> know exactly do you know what I mean? And you have to deal with those things in no. silence, and it just builds and builds and builds. It's, it is unfair, because we, it, we've had, oh my God, I swear it was like eight, eight writers on, it was weird. And it was three of us already. And then it was like another extra five or six. And I just thought, it, was it just anyone that popped through the door Do you know at what that mean? time? No, it genuinely, like, genuinely, <laughs> someone will pop their, this is why I'm so moral and I don't take shit, you know. Someone will pop their head, head in, in to try and add one word yeah. and come for 5%. Yeah. You can fuck out of here, no. mate. I'll, no. I'll pause the project and be like, hey, you're right. Yeah. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's why it's always good. You know what? Minimum people in that room. Facts. So when's your next single? You have to, when's the single out? Um, so my next one is... And what is it called? It's called Black Mascara. Amazing. It's, it's, it's um, I actually haven't told anyone this, but it's the only dance record on the whole project. Stop it. Yeah. Okay. Which, for and you're me... you're happy with that? Yes. Good. It's a liberating. Like, good. For me... Like I was saying before, like I had, I've had a really big problem with like identity, like right. in my whole life, really. I'm a mixed race young girl, of grown course. up in Croydon, like you know, it's kind of like you know, where do you fit? Like, what are you allowed to say? What you're not allowed to say? Right. How do you express yourself? Mm -hmm. You know, kind of like too too white to be black, but then too, too black, black to, to be, be white. white. You know I what I mean? That. Like raised by African mothers and grandma who raised me. Speaking, you're, you're half Ghanaian, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm part Ghanaian, Swiss, and Brit I'm not even looking at my flags <laughs> to, to, to double check. <laughs> oh, that's what you're doing. Okay, and we actually have a look. Yeah, there you go. I love that. Okay, Thank you. hello. Yes, yes. no, so but I, that's good though. I love. It is. I love that. But it, it, you know, it should be seen as you know a strength, but obviously, you know, the world has a way of of like we were saying, highlighting the negativity of right. every flipping aspect. Right. So, you know, I think when I came into the industry, I, I, I struggled with the same thing because, you know, my label at the time was like, you need to choose a sound, you need an identity. Like, right. who are you? You don't know who you are, right. you know? People, you're confusing everyone because you, you, you know, you need to pick something what and establish doing. yourself as that. And that's been genuinely my biggest challenge. Right is that I'm not one thing. Right. I'm not one thing by heritage, by right. DNA. I'm not one no, thing no, of course not. by music. Like you can't, I feel claustrophobic being yeah. us ushered into only allowed to make music at a certain so, tempo yeah. and with a certain sonic. Like this is just not me. And I also just don't feel like that's necessarily how people consume music these no, days. Of course not. Do you know what Everyone, I mean? To be honest, I think people are a lot more open-minded about music. A hundred percent. Especially these days. I mean, to be honest, like I've done my, as, well, I've grown up listening to R&B, mm -hmm. 90s R&B, mm -hmm. but now I've kind of opened up to a lot more of the kind of what's going on now. Yeah. Trying to kind of see what the mixture is. But saying that, I mean, who do you think right now mm. is a good artist? Oh, I mean, like at this precise moment, there are so many amazing right. artists. Who's you like? Who's you like your top three? I guess like current, 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 cur like literally today's music. Okay, well, I think Doja Cat is incredible, amazing. I and agree. Also, the reason why like, I remember when I was seventeen, I did my first like writing trip to LA, amazing. and I was working with some producers, and they were like. Um, telling me about this artist Doja Cat. I was serious. Yeah. Okay. And, and I went and then checked her project out. Um, she had a song called So High, Control, um, No Police, all of these songs. And I fell in love with her. I really? thought she was absolutely incredible. This was is, is years that, ago. Does she still have the same sound back then or was it? She's definitely evolved. Okay. But she's, she's an incredible... She's got the most ridiculous pen. She can bounce into Amazing. any kind of genre or flow she wants. She can rap, she can sing, she can do pop, she can do R&B, she can do hip hop. Everything. Like, she can do whatever she wants. Mm -hmm. Like, she, she, she's darting into rock sounds and alternative sounds. I like, can see that She well, can though. do whatever she wants. Exactly. And she does it. She's an artist. An artist, Definitely. purely. And the reason I respect it even more so is like, she ridiculously hustled. Right. 
and finally had a breakout moment for releasing Bitch I'm a Cow <laughs> with a living iPhone. She made the video on her laptop with like a milkshake. I don't think like, I've actually bitch, seen Bitch I'm a that. Cow. Bitch I'm a Cow. So fucking no, kudos to her, that. yeah, babe, because you're releasing all this incredible music right. and then obviously something obscure and something that's completely I a joke. Look at that. You have to check it out oh, because it's a Bitch, I'm a cow. <laughs> yeah, moo, oh, I'm a cow. Oh, moo, I'm a cow. Moo, like. something like that. But that was her breakup moment that stays so happen and now she's just had her door open and she's just gone. She's amazing. But she fought for it and she's artistically excellent and... She's herself, and I really, really, really respect her. Like, no. that's a resilience, you no, know. With, like, with Doja. Yeah, like, no, I, no I, I totally agree. before. And, like, even when I watch, I'm a big, like, I do watch her lives. Oh, really. she's just hilarious, and does what the fuck she wants. The dance, the execution, the her things skill that level. she does is, is mental, Dumb. and even the creativity of, like, her looks and. Yes. And I think that's what it's all about being an artist. hundred yes. percent. Are these songs that you've always wanted to put out and just never been given that chance yeah. to? And for reasons of being with who you was with well, before. Well, yeah, that it won't sell or of course. It, it's not. It's or did they tell my you narrative. it wouldn't sell? Yeah, to, babe, like, and this is the thing with, with mm. music today and the beauty of music today is right. you can't predict what no. people are going to love. People just love it if they love it. If they like it, they like it. You can't force no. feed shit down people's throats anymore. I do you agree. know what I'm saying? I agree. If you like the shit, it will sell, it will do well, it will go, or it will be a matter of time. It might be a year, two years, three years. It takes back. time. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. No, it does. So it's like, if we're not allowed to trust our judgment for what, like, this represents me, I believe in this with right. my whole heart and I want to share it, then, then what are we doing point? this for? I know. Do you know what I mean? I totally agree. What is the point? I totally because agree. Because if it's not even going to like, I remember, and it's really sad because I don't, you know, I don't like to even talk bad on things I've done, but there's a song I released called Call On Me, right? Which, right. which was the epitome of everything that I didn't want to do, right? Okay. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, I, I, I went to Sweden for a long time, studied how to write like craft pop songs and dance songs and mm-hmm. hooks and, you know, all of that stuff. And I was told, you know, don't hand in anything below the BPM of 120 or whatever. So it's oh, yeah, like, I've heard that. so you, right. Yeah. So you have the tick boxes that I had to tick. It was like, you know, you need a song like kind of like bed or like it needs to be big, it needs to be happy. Like people don't want sad things. It's the biggest like, task babe. ever. So I'm like in the studio, I've created. It and I'm like, okay, this sounds like what they what they want yeah. me to create. And you know, I was like, okay, we'll do this, but provided I get to create amazing video, right. do you know what I mean? Something okay. I love. And the song came out, and it's it's those moments you realize the mediator is like, if you put a song out and it doesn't do well, but you love it, I can sleep peacefully at night mm-hmm. because I'm like, I agree, I love it, yeah, and that doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. If you put out a song and it doesn't do well and you don't like it, it is like torment on mm-hmm. another flipping scale. I totally Because you understand. just have egg on your face, mm-hmm. you're ashamed, you're embarrassed, you didn't even like the shit in the first uh-huh. place. And I was just sat there and I pulled myself like, I can't deal with this feeling anymore no. and I can't do the feeling sober and it's like, I'm trying to change my <laughs> life around. Do you know what I'm saying, girl? Like, I'm trying I to get, get it right. I get it. Do you get what I'm I saying? Totally, I can't lie. There was, um before I left the group, so we had just released, I think it was Ugly. Mm. And then I had my daughter and it was still early. I think it was, it must have been, cause we recorded, I was literally still recording mm. while I was pregnant. Mm. And then I gave birth to her and then we wow. went straight straight away. We did um, Push The Button video. Stop. Yeah. And then, Wait, um, you had just had a baby in that video? Just had a baby in the video. Bitch, how? No, I lo- but you know what it is? I lost weight. I went from like eight and a half stone to like six and a half stone. Stop. Yeah, like literally. But during the time that I had That video was so hard, iconic, babe. I it was remember, cute. I was an iconic fucking it was very video, cute. Bitch. I can't I even watch that all the time on the show. I'd remake that in a very nice way. Yes, <laughs> yes. Come on. But we, um, we did all the other, like the singles, and mm. then we had a song, which everyone knows about. So there's a song called... Um, Red dress, red dress. Yeah. Cooler than the red dress. Right. Yeah. So I do like the song. It's so funny because me and Keisha were talking about it the other day and I was like, oh, it's not actually as bad as I thought. (laughs) (laughs) But back then I was a lot younger. Mm. So in my mind, I was a lot more stubborn and Mm. I was going through my own personal Mm. life. I was going through problems with myself Mm. or whatever. But I kept going, well, if you release the song, I'm leaving. And then I remember, I remember, um, leaving and they released it. <laughs> I 
I was like, well, good, because I was not going to go. I was, I was determined not to go. I was like, I'm a singer. Mm. I believe in my lyrics. Mm-hmm. I said, and the, f- the only thing that kept coming into my head was, I'm cooler than a what? I'm cooler than a red yeah, dress. No, and girl. I didn't get it. Yeah. And But I think it was because I was in my own mind space. And maybe if I took a bit of time out for myself back then and didn't rush into doing everything, then I would have still mostly been in the group. But it was because I felt like there was a lot going on. Mm. and But you felt you was having to compromise. Yeah, compromise. Your gut, feeling your artistic integrity. A lot of it, of course. Which you should never have to feel. There you go. And that's how I felt like you. I felt like I was putting myself out there to be the clown mm. and everyone to go <laughs> laugh, you know. But realistically, I should have just embraced myself and been like, all right, cool. This is what it is, bearing in mind with two other girls. Mm. But because my mind frame was so... I am an artist and I believe in lyrics mm-hmm. and I need to make sure the lyrics mean something 100%. to me. 100%. I, I, fi- I find there's no point singing. 100%. I'm not going to sing a song that doesn't mean anything. No. Especially if it's mine. Facts. There you go. Facts. So, and that's why I was kind of like, okay, me doing this, is it doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. But now I'm like, okay, it's, it's not that bad. But I still stuck by my words and that, that's what you have to do. Exactly. You know, we've both had crazy moments where we've been so... It's, it hurts. Mm-hmm. It hurts to know, you know, how people look at you, how your music's not doing how you mm-hmm. want it to go, or or people don't have enough belief, like they don't have belief, they don't believe in you yeah. and in the way that you believe in yourself. Yeah. But then you knock yourself and then you think to yourself, okay, actually, it's, this is all worth it when once I know that I'm in a place that I can just say, here's my music and and people just accept it for what it is. 100%, 100%. And I think that's how it goes with looks as well. Yes. Oh my God. Don't even get me you As soon as you change yourself, oh my God. No. It's like you've just told, you've just lost the whole of your talent. Everyone wow. goes, it's weird. It is so, the imagery stuff is tough. It's crazy. It's a, it's a daily battle, I think, from a lot of women and men. And it's, mm-hmm. I think obviously socials is, a big part of that, the, really the standard. <laughs> I even have a song on my album where I talk about this in extreme detail. Right. You know, because I've really suffered with um, a lot of the body stuff, like in behind the scenes, you right. know, and you, you really get, you can really get lost in a really dark place of, of that, you know. And it's like, that in itself is just a, is a daily journey. And I, I, you know, you I worry for like my, my baby sister, who's at like 11, you know, like, you know, wanting to have this certain kind of nose, nose and, and wanting to surgery. have like, you know, a certain shape of breast. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if I you're not agree. thick in the bum, like you don't have anything to offer a man. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it's just, and you chasing these trends and it's just very, no, very daunting, I it's think, true. to sometimes be able to look in the mirror and be happy with what you see. Mm-hmm. How do you like, how do you navigate um, the pressures of imagery like, and how you look that's always been a thing for me so for me like I've never been I've never been one to say oh surgery is a bad thing I'm mm-hmm. all up for it whatever yeah. makes you happy yeah. I'm down for yeah. it um, unfortunately not everyone else is down for it too but that's mm-hmm. cool that's their opinion mm-hmm. for me I always feel like my my thing about myself is when I get into a, a mad I, when I become quite closed in myself mm-hmm. and then I start overthinking and then I start thinking about not just what I sound like. I start looking at what I look like, and and then the comments of what people say, and then I go, and then I go and try and fix it. And that's what my problem is. My mm. problem was then I would not know more, but I would want to, you know, go take a trip to Turkey because mm. I'm trying to fix the problems mm-hmm. of what people have been mentioning to me or, or talking about. So it, realistically, for me, it's like when people talking about when people say things like that to you, they don't realize the damage is. They don't. Is that you are actually, because they look at us as, you know, maybe face these strong women, right. people who got too much personality right. or whatever, they don't realise that we're actually very, very vulnerable. Facts. And so when people say the weirdest things, you do automatically go, okay, this is a thing. Yeah, I have a problem. I have a I problem now. Yeah. So when, but when, when you go and fix the problems that everyone's trying to say that, that you have, they've got even more problem because you've gone and tried to fix what they've been saying. Oh, yeah. she hasn't got lips. Oh, she hasn't got bum. Yeah. Or, oh my gosh, she's fat. Yeah. You know, so then you go and fix it, you fix the problem and they go, oh God, she's doing surgery. Ew, what's she done to herself? It's like, how can you, you can't win. win? You can't. You can't win. No, you it's can't. like turning your hair from black to, 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 um, to blonde and everyone goes, oh, she doesn't look good. No. <laughs> 
Okay, so I'll go red then. Do you know what I mean? Well, no, she still doesn't look good. So what the fuck do you want to go bold? So it is... um, you and then you go learn. bold like Dojo and everyone's like, she's gone crazy. She's gone wild. She doesn't look attractive anymore. Like, are you sick in the head? This is the problem. Leave alone. the women's alone. Leave the men's alone. Leave everyone Everybody alone. Everybody alone. Like, everyone should should be able to just be how they want, sound how they want. Facts. And I this think is these the problem. algorithms need, you know, we, we've got very smart, high intelligence now. These algorithms need to register a right. negative comment mm-hmm. and immediately Take it off. remove it. Take it off. We remove. shouldn't have to be going. I mean, that's how I feel about Google. Can't lie. Mm. Google is the worst thing. Once it's on there, we'll never come off. Right. And it's it's one of them things. That's why I was saying earlier on when there's that one day when it's like 24 hour, everything's been switched off. Mm. No one has to worry about anything. I can't even lie. People are gonna feel, people are gonna learn learn how to feel how it feels to breathe again. I know. Like even like now, I'd be like, oh my god, I could just walk out in the street and someone's been like, oh look what she's wearing, put it up there, and it could be the worst picture. And you're like, do you know what I mean? Giving the weirdest look, looking like you're fucking. And you just you just don't look yourself, and there it's all right to put up. Do you know what I mean? Girl, yes. I could put that up and be like, oh look, there she is. Look, there's Ray. And then put up a picture of you and, you'll be, and you're like, I've tagged you in and you're like, what the fuck is it? Oh my God. <laughs> and there's nothing you can do about no. it. And then what people do is screenshot. Yeah, and then you use it. And then it's on there. And then you're a like, meme. Yeah, no. Uh, no. <laughs> That's why I was like, it, people just don't have respect for And then they don't. Space. And there definitely is definitely very funny moments where memes can just make you sit there and die of laughter. Die of laughter or, or, or what the or fuck be like. want oh to God. flip in, dig yourself a hole and just and, bury and jump yourself in it. in it, gal. That's exactly gal. how I feel. It's really tough. I remember when I was dating some big celebrity and... Flipping, I got all of this new pr- new kind of people coming to my right. so cool. page and platform oh, wow. to like leave comments and stuff. Was and it good, bad? No, they were really horrible. Really? They were horrible comments. And and stuff I've kind of got from a kid. Like basically, I always talk about this. Like, I hate my square face. Like oh, I really shut hate up. it. Girl, I no, you hate don't. it. People in school actually used to call me like horse jaw really? like horse face yeah like it oh, was hell no. it was like dark you know and then when I got these comments all coming like hundreds of comments all at once like about how I look l- like a man or things like that like they it, you know you that's shocking it's just dark you it know is. and it's just like I was just I'm just trying to be out happy. here happy living my life but then it's like you said you hear those comments and then you're like okay I'm now looking in the mirror every day like how do I fix this so I don't yeah. get called those things again? Or yeah. how do I, how do I not, I never want to hear those things. And no, it's like, of the irony is for where we're aiming to go is like, we want to release more, perform more, right. access more people, like get out more. But with more access to people it's comes more, more negativity, <laughs> then no. comes more self-hate and self-criticism. So it's like a vicious cycle. It's, like, it's horrible. How do we you just To be honest, I just feel that. like it's people. I feel like people just need to be, just be nice. Like I, it doesn't cost to be nice. Like mm. it really bothers me that people have got so much to say, mm. more negative than positive. Mm. And and I think for the last like since we've been in lockdown, mm. I've been trying to be doing this whole you know new me positive, not even new me new day bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been just doing more of a positiveness, and, yeah. and that's me looking at myself more positively. Yes, and and realizing that there's a lot more things I can be happy about mm. than be sad. Than be about. sad about, right? But it's about getting there, right? And it doesn't help that I'm trying to get there, but every time I'm, I'm there, someone pushes me back with yeah, a comment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's, I just feel like, as artists, it's always going to happen to mm-hmm. us. What kind of things have you spoken about in like your and your album? Body dysmorphia is one right. of them. Mm-hmm. You know, do you know what's so interesting actually? When now I'm even thinking about it, I've had so many conversations about this with other women in the industry, and it's right. the same. And but everyone thinks the same. Yeah, everyone is hiding or, or working out how to deal with mm-hmm. that negativity. Yeah, it's really coming to my mind now. No, it's true. Yeah. it's. I think it is the worst. I think it's, I can't even lie, like, it is the worst. I, if if there's anything in the industry that's made me go into, like, the lowest of the low, yeah. it would be that. Yeah. It would be mainly how people looked at me. Yeah. Because I always, t- always tried to feel like, okay, vocally, I feel like, 
you know, I'm all right, I'm good, I'm there. I'm, I'm at this, the place where I am comfortable. Mm. Talking about certain things, I feel I'm comfortable. Mm -hmm. But it's always how people look at me, whether it's looks. Um, not so much my attitude, because I'm like, oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I can't be bothered. You know, I just don't have the energy for you for that. I but, need to take a leave by your book, you know. Oh, babe, I listen. Need to. Do you know how many people I've actually had to be like, bye. Like, mm. I've never locked off so many people within the last couple of years. Really? I've locked them all off. And I was that person that had too many friends. Mm. I was that person that always had somewhere to go every day of the week. Wow. Um, but now I'm like, I sit at home waiting for my daughter to come home back from the rave. I'm like, like <laughs> sitting with two cats, like the cat woman with fucking 17 year olds out till 5 a.m. <laughs> falling asleep in bathtubs. That's what I deal with now. And I'm happy to do that. Mm. But I'm also happy to- Why did to... you feel like you needed to lock off? Because it just, cause you know what it is? It's because I just felt like, it, I, I feel like there's been so many people in the industry as well that's been so fake. And and it doesn't help when the people that you love and the people that you think are genuine towards mm -hmm. you are doing the exact same mm -hmm. fucking thing. So when I reckon that, when I started to recognize, because I was so blinded, mm. I feel like I was so blinded before. And when I started opening my eyes and recognizing, I really feel you. oh my God, actually, you know, I had a comment done to me like many years ago and, and it was a really good friend of mine. And this was a time when I was very, very quiet and I wasn't doing very much. And Sugar Ray's, we wasn't really, we were together, but we wasn't doing much. And I wasn't doing much for my solo. Mm. <laughs> and I remember feeling like I was being left out from a few of my friends. And I was like, okay, so I ended up having- Why, why don't you think? Because it was like, I just I just never got phone calls anymore. I'd see, I'd see them all going out together. And the only time they'd be out with me is when I've invited them out to come to somewhere. And the comment I got was, I was like, so what's going on? And he, was, he said to me, that's because you're not doing anything with your life right now. And I went, excuse me? And I sat there and I cried. And I remember saying to him, what the fuck did you just say to me? He was like, oh no, 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 don't take it like, no. I went, no, you just said the reason why you basically had to leave me alone. Is because me, I'm not I wasn't getting being, the press or I'm not I wasn't in the height of my- wasn't material of my- Basically of my career again. So I just sat there and went, Okay, I'm gonna remember this. And every time, every time I saw him, I reminded him. Good. Every time. Because I just thought, I've known you for I many, many, many years. That person oh, we, out, we do out. not talk at all anymore. We don't talk Goodbye. anymore. Goodbye. No. What is that? We do not talk anymore. Because I just felt like this was a person that I always had around me. I brought this person out to everything I did. Um Girl. I even took this person on holiday. Girl. Like all this stuff. And then for you to say what came out of your mouth that night shocked me. Girl. And it stuck by me every But you know day. what? That's a blessing yeah. that he actually said that and let yes. it slip because more yes. time, mm -hmm. you'll have people around you who feel this way, but and you don't, don't even shit. know. And you're like, no, that's my, that's my that's person. That's my people, yeah. That's my family. No. That's my ones. No. Meanwhile. That's what you were thinking. So when I, when I heard that, this is the reason why that group of people, not just that one person, this is the group of people that no. dropped me out. Bear in mind, it's about four of them. No. So when I was just like, oh, so this is the reason. And then I just had to really sit back and think to myself, right. okay, wow, like you didn't even, you didn't even go around, go around it. You actually just said what it was. No. And then I felt it hurt for two minutes, but then I thought to myself, this is the reason why I need to start doing the dropping seasons. Yeah. Because as you said, if that's what you were thinking, but never said it, how long how has this many, been going on? Yeah, and how and many who, other people got yeah. doing this? Yeah. And that's why you just have to be so mindful about your your heart and your mind and your yeah, soul. Yeah, and who you let into your life. Exactly, because these demons out there. Yeah, they are. And that's <clears> something that is, I think, really hard when you're an artist or you're doing something like, whatever, that people, aspirational, mm -hmm. so to speak, right? I right. feel like, Genuinely, no one will tell me to my face like what they actually think. No, of course not. Like people will be like, "Hey, like how you ask. love your new song?" Of course they do. You know, oh, you look great, or like this and that and this. Meanwhile, I'll hear from the great through the grapevine. No, this is what's going on. This is what people have actually said, or this is what that person said, or the, you know, because I got a you know a couple like like my sisters are like my best friends. They'll tell you the truth. They'll tell me of the course. truth. Do you know what I mean? And I'm like. 
it's very disorientating that part, I think, because it's just like, you know, I, I, I definitely see the best in people or to my own, I can be very naive. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, I understand. You know, I'll be there and I'm just, I love people. I'm such a people it's person. It's because you don't want to, but yeah, you're a people person. Right. And you're, it's not about upsetting people's feelings. I've been that person who I'd rather upset my own feelings than hurt yours. Right, right. I'm, I'm, more, of a, I'm more of a giver than a, a receiver. 100%. But this is what happens to us. Right? <laughs> you just get fucking taken for idiot. This, like, is, what? This, this is what happens to us. We end up being the people that get hurt. And in the long mm. run, it's harder for us to pick ourselves up mm. and believe what people say. Like if someone gets to me, you're so amazing. I'm like, oh, yeah, thanks. And I'm not saying it like that because I'm being sarcastic. Yeah. Or being funny. It's because I don't fucking believe you. Mm. And really and truly, there are people out there that really do appreciate us. There are some people who really us. do. Yeah, but there of are course. some people who just say it to you because right. you're in front of their face. Mm hmm and will waste your time with air. But meanwhile, you was definitely chatting shit about me last week to your friend saying, mm -hmm. what is Rach Ray's broken down? It's mm -hmm. at the end of her career. Oh yeah, the last She's stop. got no, yeah. she's, you know, it's not looking good for her. Have you seen the stats on her new, do you know what I mean? Which, which is funny because most of what, when the people that are saying that ain't doing fuck all with their lives. How do you think we discern genuine from, from ingenuine? I don't know. I, I just feel like you just have to follow your heart at times. Because mm. you know what? We're the best judges. Like, as long as we, you know, I mean, I, maybe it's now that I'm starting to judge people in a more, in a correct way. Because mm. sometimes I was wrong. Mm. And I admit that. But now I'm like, okay, I'll well, give a chance. wrong is in like, you get paranoid. Yeah, paranoid. Yeah. Paranoid is a big thing. Yeah, facts. Like, everyone to me, if I didn't, if I felt the way that I felt a couple of years ago, I wouldn't be going out now. Mm. And I definitely won't be sitting in here. Mm. Like, I became so enclosed and didn't want to talk to nobody, mm. shut the curtains, mm. you know, and I just wanted to basically, it could have been fucking 100 degrees outside. I'm not opening up a window. Yeah. I'm <laughs> dying inside. <laughs> literally. I'm literally sitting there, cat woman dying inside with the cat like this, <laughs> waiting for someone to knock on my door. But I swear to God, like, we just have to just be ourselves mm. and just realize that we're doing a lot more than others. Mm. And to put your lyrics on paper and to sing it out there and let people know your feelings mm. and to put yourself out there and feel so, you know, so like, you know, even like when I was watching your videos, I felt everything you were saying and I felt the pain that you were going through. Mm. And it was just, it was hard enough to watch it, but I understood it because it was something we've all kind of been through. Right. But it's hard for someone out there that hasn't been through like mm. things like that. Because everyone feels like as an in, as an artist, you go out there and you're making bare money. You're making money, you're this star, and everyone thinks, ooh, you know, your life's amazing. Mm. Me and Keisha, we do shows and go, oh God, guess what we're doing now? Going back to our boring homes. <laughs> and we do that. We've done all these big shows and then we go home feeling yeah. like shit. There is a real illusion, actually, you're right. Of, of what it is like, to you know, an to be an artist. It is just really not what people think it is. It really is. isn't. And and the thing is, we do it because we love the craft. We love our exactly. art. We love our performing performances, connecting with fans, releasing music. Like when it when it catches your heart, you just There's can't deter. You, can you can't give it. up. You just have I to totally see agree. it through. But the negative side of it, I wish people um, were able maybe to see or more of it because maybe then the empathy would be stronger and people would be kinder to right. musicians of you know course. where it's like you know everyone in the world is going through shit you know mm -hmm. there's everyone in the world has good days and bad days do you know what I mean of I just course. feel like sometimes in this job it can be so magnified and heightened because when you actually think about what we do for a living is we work and pour our whole souls into something mm -hmm. and then it is the opinion and judgment of others that determines our progress. Exactly. And we are pinnacles where we put ourselves out there to be judged. That is our Basically. job. Our job is to be... Judged. Judged, assessed, listened to, decided, mm -hmm. analysed. Yeah. Picked at, and that is like an everyday thing. Thing. That is basically our life. And, and it's and, an everyday struggle. And you go through these daily flipping crazy thoughts about your perception because that's our job. Mm -hmm. How the hell? It's kind of hard to move on from it, to be honest, because it's like, you're so used to having people now judge you. Right. That if, as you said, if you put a post up and no one's judging it in any type right. of way, good or bad, right. you automatically think, what's wrong? It's right. like, refresh, refresh. Right. Is there something wrong with me? Right. And 
I do the same thing. Like sometimes before I used to always put wear my heart on my sleeve. So mm. how I was feeling, I put quotes up. And, and did yes, it girl. and then and, and I can't help it I'm saying I'm, I'm ex- <laughs> like, I can't lie I can't about how it. I really feel and like, I I've feel had people you. go to me okay well maybe you should just um, yeah maybe tone it back maybe just like pretend which to be I happy which I fucking or, like, hate exactly you shut up because I'm not I happy hate. right now I hate do you know what I mean and I want you to feel sorry for me yes <laughs> sometimes I want to bask in my emotions but but, but then it's like, oh, it. she's going through a crisis. Yeah. Oh, look, there she goes again. This is why you it's know. so important for people to realise that, like, for me, I always, I wouldn't say it's a thing, a big, big thing for me, but I, I suffered a lot with mental health. Mm. But that's why quotes and whatever, with whatever I'm, how I'm feeling, mm. shouldn't bother your day, babe. Fact. It shouldn't bother your day. If anything, it's to inspire you to feel Facts. like you're human, but you're yeah. a human being. Yeah. And actually, if you are feeling like this, it's better to let people know that instead of you sitting in silence. A hundred percent. And I think that's the that's where we don't realise when people, even like other artists that we love, 100%. do that stuff. It's a big cry out for help. And but it's a cry out for you to realise that I'm only human and I'm here too. And, yes. And I mean something to yes. this world as much yes. as you do. Yes. And so you need to lay it out because if it's not going to get out that way, you're just going to. No, one hundred percent. You should be sitting there like fucking upset with no, the world. No, exactly. And that's why I feel like as women as well. You know, especially for us, we just need to go out, build our empire, you know, put out music that we know works for others, but mm-hmm. also works for us. Mm-hmm. You know, because we know as artists, we have to still compromise what works for the, works, what works for our, you know, 100%. For our audience. Oh my God, here's another one. Dating <laughs> as a musician, okay? Oh God. <laughs> Dating as as an artist myself, right? Yes, has been the most traumatizing thing for me. Why is why? Basically, yeah. This is when I realized like shit was just wild as a woman. Like, <laughs> first of all, I had a boyfriend, right? Right. Who was in the industry? Okay. And I was like younger, this was like my first um, boyfriend, and I'll never forget this. This shit fucked me up for a long time. Okay, I was in love with this guy. You know, sometimes we worked together. Like, we had a great relationship. It was so healthy, so beautiful. Right. Like, but I remember, and I didn't even, it, it wasn't even a public relationship. You know? okay. I mean, I kept it very close. Okay. I heard my first comment, oh and it was like, some artist had said, oh, Ray's fucking da da da. Are you fucking kidding me? Babes. What? And they were artists themselves? Yes. Okay. And I was, you know, I was a bit young at the time, like 18, 19, maybe. Okay, that's weird. And you hear this thing and it's like, oh, okay, well, that's my boyfriend, but sure, we're going to address it like that. That right. instantly makes you super Question. paranoid. Yeah. And like that that got to me through, she told someone who I knew, who told someone who I knew, who told me. So it's like, oh. you're then there, like... Chinese whisper. Oh my goodness, what are people saying about me mm-hmm. behind my back? And it and it then paranoia sets in. Yeah. Then it starts to just affect the thread of your relationship because I don't want to be seen as a slut or whatever. But it's like I find the double standards for men and women are different. And women men. are just Always. absolutely disgustingly Always. wrong. And then when that happened, you obviously, you know, you know when you, you're buying an, a car and then all of a sudden you see it driving down yeah. the street all mm-hmm. the time and you're like, oh my God, and I'm seeing this noticeable. car everywhere. Mm-hmm. It's like that. It's like, right. as soon as I heard that comment, I started seeing mm. these th- thought processes everywhere I went in the industry. Like, And it all reminded you of the same yes, thing. Yes, like yeah. men execs, people talking about women in a certain way or yeah. like, oh, well, this artist is this had sex with this person, this person, like, what does it, why does it matter? And why no. are you talking about it? No. And then it instantly affects like, you know, well, I don't, you know, it was it was part of the thing, I think that, that caused rifts for me because of the paranoia that come in with it. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? I know exactly how you And feel. that's even a p- closed relationship from the public. And that's not even so in the public. the industry doesn't yeah. even respect, like dating choices, it's like, as a woman, like it almost is this, sometimes who you've dated before even what you've done. Like, even when I was watching J-Lo's... Um, a um, documentary. Yeah, her documentary. Mm-hmm. And she's incredible. Like, I've been doing some writing with her at the moment. She's like, such an re- incredible woman. That's amazing, go on. I remember, like, I was watching this documentary, like, 
the poor thing like all these accolades she's worked her ass off been in how many flipping movies yeah how many flipping songs released yeah and the, the headline and the pinnacle it's is still about your, her your love life or your se- you know what you can sexually offer the world as a woman like but does but that just shows you that? already that everything that you do in your life could be so amazing that's why i feel like i've i've purposely stayed away from guys in the industry. Mm. I don't think I've even dated one. Really? Yeah, I've not even dated one guy from the industry. But how do you how do, you do that? Because I find it so hard because every time I've tried to date like a guy, just like a random like John or whatever, yeah. John Doe or whatever, I get some sort of issue with the fact that what music will always come first or yeah. like that I'll be earning money and right. there's insecurities. Like, I've never found someone that's outside honest, of the thing that's work. Like, how the hell does that work? I you? don't, I mean, I guess I, I go for one guy and a type of guy. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think I can even talk about it right now. <laughs> no, I but I that. do go for a type of guy and not always the best, mm. but um, it works for me mm. because obviously I like to keep things separate. I don't want to be going home right. and, and and also like if my man's not in the industry and he's telling me, you know, how was your day? I can be like, oh, I did it and he won't get nothing I'm saying. And we're nice. not going to get technical with it. And you know nice. what? At it the same like time, yeah, yeah. And mm. and sometimes when you're, I've realised it, even just being around people that I know that are in the industry, mm. everything always seems to come back to the music industry. Mm. And sometimes you as an artist just, don't want to hear it. Right. You, sometimes you just want to sit there and go, you know what? I've wet my ass off right now and I just want to be normal yeah. for two seconds. Yeah. So yeah. going out with a guy from the industry and also I used to always say if I saw my man in the newspaper with another chick I would <laughs> fucking kill him. No. I'll come for him and come for her. No. It would be the end of both of them. Babe, so for it. me, it's for me to stay sane and not go prison mm. I'd just rather not <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather not you know what I've done so well for over 20 years I'm a yes. remain I'm, I'm going to keep my feet on the street Come I'm not in girl, prison girl I hear if I that. myself in prison no, I'm, too, I'm not going to lie I do really hear that I really <laughs> hear that I think it's just nice to have um, I mean obviously like I guess like as I said I've got a type mm. my type isn't the best but it works, mm. you know? And and just for me, it just means that I can just get on with my days mm. and he better be as busy as I am as well because mm. I'm not ready to him. you with no time. Babe, we're not kids. I'm not babying you. I've got things to do. And that's my main priority right now mm. is that even like right now for yeah. me, I'm like, have my 17 year old daughter who's in between what she wants to do with her life and still want to party till 5 a.m. <laughs> and you want to take money off me on a weekly basis. <laughs> you need a job, right? So I, that's where I am in my yeah. life. And then on top of that, I've got my own shows and then the sugar based stuff. Mm. I don't have time. Well, I hear there's no love like having a child, like a, a, a love for a child. Yeah. Like maybe, you know, maybe when I have a child one day that would just be like contentment enough like yeah, would I'd, you say I would say you know what I'd say does it differ they, from any other love that you have oh my god definitely we're very very close like oh. I go out on a weekend and she comes with me oh because she never looks she doesn't look at age she's she's 17 but she looks like a good 18, 19 because wow. these these kids these days I don't know what the hell's in the no, world no I don't know what is in but you got 14 year olds out here like 19 year olds my daughter's yeah. way taller than me <laughs> thick thighs <laughs> Yeah. Why? And I'm like that, bitch. Where are you going? <laughs> like, but I take her out with me because Aww. we're so close. And she tells me, like, I'm always the person. I'll go into room. Does this look okay? Does this look okay? She's like, Mum, change your trainers. You ain't wearing nothing. <laughs> and and that is the love I love. Do you know what mm. I mean? But it also helps when I'm in love with my music yeah. and I'm in love with my life. Yeah. And it's taken me a fucking long time mm. to be in love with myself because mm. I wasn't mm. I hated myself even like the quickest opportunity to fly and go change something about myself mm. was a was there always God. it was about finding time God. if I had the time you I'd be there yeah. yeah but I thought I feel like if people back off mm. a little on mm. us and allow us to be who the fuck we want to mm. be then we wouldn't have to be ser- soul yeah. searching and searching for this and searching yeah. for things that yeah you know, it'll be all free. You know, that's why sometimes I even go out. There's times when I've I've gone and did free shows because I just enjoy singing. Girl, I love that. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I, I love and that. This is it's just about like having people just respect you, and once mm. people respect us, then we can finally be happy. Mm. You know, and I and I feel like you're on the right path. You've you're doing you're working with who? Jen, Jennifer Lopez. Yo. Girl, 
Come and on. It's really exciting. And who else? Anyone else you're working with? We've been working... I've been working with this artist quite a bit recently called Hallie Bailey. She's super talented. She's going to be Little Mermaid as well in the new... Oh, that's... that's um, the sister. Chloe's, Chloe's, Chloe's sister, yeah. Oh, my God. She I is love so her. talented. She's so lovely. So you've been working with her? Yeah. Amazing. I mean, yeah, working with her. She's just... I love... I love working with her. She's just that... So you've been travelling? Yes. Right. Travelling a bit. Been doing some stuff with Leanne from Little Mix. I've Amazing. Got, um, she's got her music coming out, right? Yeah, I mean, I can't reveal too much. Right, I don't know course. her timelines and stuff like that, but she's working on some amazing, amazing. material. My little sister's doing that too. That. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. And um, I'm going to be doing some stuff, stuff with Jade as well, which is exciting because I love her. I, I absolutely. I, to be honest, I love. I love looking at the girls. I think the girls have done so well. I'm they so, really have. I'm happy and I'm proud of them for how far and and what they've accomplished as well. Because from the outside of looking in and gone through so much shit as as being in girl mm. groups, it's a lot. I can't imagine that. It's horrible. That's a real thing that you have to Everyone, really work like hard to mix. overcome because that's yeah. that's a pain in itself. Like yeah. validation, real uh, issues yeah. with that. And like, you could be someone that you know. People love your vocals and yeah. people love what you do, but you're actually, you're, you find yourself still feeling very isolated. And that's why when people say to me, would you do another solo album? I'm like, I doubt it. Mm. And if I did, it would be something, and I'd, I'd put it out there for free mm. because it's something that I love. Yes, and that's what matters most. Right. As long as you and your gut are like, this is where I want to be, this is what I want to be doing, mm-hmm. this is the chapter I want to embark on, like I want to be back with the girls, we're gonna that's it. Do you know what I mean? You just then have that's to embrace. What matters. Exactly. You know, because I know a lot of people are gonna be upset with the fact that I'm only doing one dance on this thing because people oh, think well. I'm an electronic queen. Do you know what I mean? Man, I love oh, dance well. music, but no, like I'm I'm that's not my entire narrative. Well, girl, be a Do you know what I mean? This is why this is why I have so much respect for Beyonce. Mm. Cause she's there, she does she's done this whole big dance album. Yes. But before that, she's done vocal tracks and, and yes. she's done rapping and, and she showed people that she can... Versatility. And her love of music. It's crazy, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, and that's her, why you can't put to one she genre. She is a whole other level though, like Miss B, like what the hell? But it won't be hard for you, as in you yourself, mm. to be like that. Because you are I'll like just that. just work hard. That's it. As long as we're moving... I hear you. ...in a positive direction right. and, and not being too hard on ourselves about the dark days and the relapses and the I know, moments of, I totally agree. You know? Put it in your music. Right. Put it in your music. Yes. This podcast was produced with Front Ear Podcasts. It was edited by Nathan Copeland and the music was created by David Cantello. Be sure to visit theface.com for a daily dose of pop culture coverage. Thank you.